let's flip some thrifted items. I grabbed several items from my stash from that I had gotten from Goodwill, uh, charity shops, an estate sale, and just thrifted from all different kinds of places. And I gave them a base coat of black paint. And this is one of the things that I did not get finished in my last video. So I want to finish that today. It's a little caddy with a little heart handle on it. It's a very cute structure, like the bones of it is really cute. So I decided to just paint both sides, the longer sides of this little caddy, with some off-white paint. I'm going to be decoupaging on it, and I want to give a lighter color so that you'll be able to see it better. It is a paper that I've used before that has crows on it. It also has some gold, uh, like scrolling and and I don't know, maybe writing kind of in it. And I think the lighter color makes that gold pop. So that's why I'm using the lighter color today. I'm taking my, once I did the one coat of paint, I took my Mod Podge and did a nice thin coat of that on top of the paint once it was dry. Trying to figure out here what exactly I want to fit on the side of it and I finally decided and took a little spray bottle of water and just spritzed that on there. It helps kind of smooth and stretch out that paper a little bit, get those wrinkles out. So I like to use that. I forgot to grab a baggie. So I'm just gonna gently use my hand and go over it, to make sure most of the wrinkles are out if possible. And then once it dries, I'm gonna go back over the edges. I didn't wanna sand on this cause I didn't want to distress back to what it was before. It was a very bright, colorful little caddy and I didn't want that coming through. So I wanted to keep the black and nice sharp edges. So I just used a razor blade and trimmed off those edges the best that I could and then went over it with a layer of Mod Podge to seal it in, making sure I went over those edges really well so that they wouldn't peel up or, or rip or anything like that. I tried my best to not be messy when I was putting on the ivory colored paint, but I got it all over the place and I wanted to make sure it looked nice and crisp and clean, so I went back over the spots that I had already painted black with more black to just kind of clean up those edges. I got splotches and brush strokes everywhere. So I did the bottom and did the top. I went all around to make sure that I had got it all cleaned up and looking sharp. The next thing that I did once that was all dry is I sprayed it with Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer so that it would be sealed in really nicely. Then I took some of my Rub and Buff Antique Gold and I decided to bring out the gold that was in the paper the best that I could. So I thought I would put it on my finger and just kind of go over the edges, kind of like a faux distress using the gold color. I really like how this looks with the paper and it just makes that gold pop and I think it's a really pretty combination. I'm not sure where I got this little piece of board from, but I grabbed it from somewhere and said, I'm gonna definitely use this for something. And the other day I found it and I was like, I need to put one of my graders on this. So I got these graders from Amazon. I'll link them down in the description if you're interested. 
I rusted them up with a little bit of, let's see, I used, I can't tell you the specifics because I can't remember, but I used white vinegar, peroxide, and salt. And I rusted that up. I just kind of put it in there and let it soak for a while and got it all rusty. I can't remember. I think the majority of it is the white vinegar, but uh, it works so well to rust things up. So I did this a long time ago and I just did a bunch of them all at once. So that's why I'm not showing you how to do that today. Um, I would just experiment, just trying it out and seeing what works. So I sanded it down a little bit because it felt a little rough on the top and the sides. I didn't want to get rid of that old wood patina, but I did want to just kind of uh, soften it up a little bit so it wasn't so rough. I also used some IOD stamps. It's called the Mercantile Stamps. It comes in a, there's like two sheets that you get in it. Uh, and I just am loving the number seven and 1879 stamp. And I'm putting it on everything. If you hadn't noticed, if you saw my last video, um, I, I really am enjoying those stamps. So I thought a little light stamp on those to make it kind of look like an old piece of broken wood that came off a box or something like that, an old box. Then I took my E6000 and some hot glue and I glued the little metal piece down. So once the grater was dry and stuck on there really well, I'm just showing you here, it has a little stopper in there so it doesn't go all the way down through. And um, so I'm gonna cut these pieces of flowers that I got. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. They're pretty little rustic little flowers and I wanted to stick those in the top. So I just cut them down so that they were sticking out just enough and added some hot glue so they would stick in there and some Spanish moss and this came out so cute and dainty. I'm going to now take some of this netting ribbon and some of this lacy ribbon both from Dollar Tree at some point probably quite a while ago and I'm going to cut them down to go over the top. I thought this would be a nice um, pretty little touch for around the kind of handle of the piece of wood. Digging around in my stash, I found this plain, simple, cute little box that I thought was going to be really easy to do a flip with. So I just sanded it down just a little bit. Again, it was a little bit rough in certain spots and I wanted it smooth. I decided I would try and give it a little bit of a richer look and I had some of this fusion hemp oil that I love using on wood pieces. So I'm going to add a little, few little drops on that and then just kind of rub it in, wipe it back. And it just gives it a nice uh, seal along with um, just a nice rich look on it. It doesn't really stain it, but it does darken it some. So I really like that. Hemp oil is food safe also. So if you want to use it on cutting boards or 
anything like that that you think food will touch. It is food safe. So if you're interested in it, I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check that out. The next thing I'm going to do is take my stamp pad from scrapbooking.com and I'll link that in the description also. And I'm just going to stamp the mercantile stamp, the number seven. Told you guys, I'm just, I just love these stamps right now. Um, I'm just going to put that on to my box. So I'm going to do this side and then the opposite side is going to be number seven. And then the other two sides will be the 1880 nine or 1879 sorry uh stamp on those as well so i'm going to do it on both sides with that too so however you decide to display it you can have the number seven or the 1879 i just thought it was a cute little touch to a plain little box so then i took some spanish moss and added that inside i have a piece of paper down in there to kind of raise up this piece of greenery that i had kicking around i keep moving this around my uh, stash area and i'm just tired of looking at this little piece of greenery so i'm like i'm gonna put it in this box and i'm gonna put it for sale and maybe somebody will buy it and i won't have to move it around anymore it's not gonna sell sitting in my in my stash so uh, I added more Spanish moss just to get it to sit in there really nice. And I also, I don't think I got a picture of it because I thought of it afterwards, but I did take twine around the top near the top of the box and I wrapped it around and put a little bow and I just thought it would add a little nice touch and a little more rustic touch to the little box and the plant. So these three stacking boxes I got in two different places, both thrifted, one from a charity shop, this little brown one here, got for a dollar, and then these two came together, the smaller one was nested inside. These were from Goodwill, and I think I paid $2, uh, $4 for them, for the two boxes together. So I decided to make a stacking boxes with them, and uh, just use all three, they didn't come together, but in the end they work out beautifully. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take some of my Sweet Pickens Red Wagon paint. I totally love this paint. And I was looking to add some more color into my new room that I have at a mercantile that I just opened up. So I thought that I would add this beautiful color into my booth and I had some left over. So I thought I would do the bottom bigger uh, box in this red paint. This is a deep, beautiful barn, like a barn red. I don't know. It's, it's a gorgeous red. I just love it. So I did two coats on that and then I stained the top of the two box lids that, um, were just plain. The smallest box had the brown wrapping on it, the, like the brown paper, and I just left that, but I didn't want the tops, if they got chipped or scratched, to go down to the white or the wood look. I wanted it down to the stained look, so I stained those first. I will be going through and painting all of the tops, but I just wanted to start out with them all looking close to the same. I can't get it exact, of course, but close to the same thing. The medium box I'm going to, or the middle box, I'm going to just paint black. And I did two coats on that as well. One of my new favorite colors from Fusion is this Woodwick color. 
It's a beautiful lighter brown, like a grayish brown color, and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to use that for the small box and do two coats on that. And then I went ahead and decided to do the lids the same color. And so all the lids will be all this woodwick color and those get two coats as well. Once everything is dry, I'm gonna take some black wax and go over the boxes and the lids all with this black wax. I did paint the bottoms also the woodwick color so everything matches. So I just put on the black wax and then once I'm done adding it, I turn around and wipe it back off and it gives a nice aged look, a kind of a vintagey look to these prim little boxes. I found some cute labels off from Honey Bee Printables. I'll put a link down in the description for that. They're little sheep, uh, little sheep labels, and I thought they would look great on these box stacks. So I just added a little bit of Mod Podge on the back and then put them on the box. I didn't want to Mod Podge the box because I had already had it uh, sealed with the wax and I didn't want the Mod Podge to get all over that so I put it on the label and then added that to the box so that I wouldn't have Mod Podge leaking out everywhere. I also went back after I got those all on and made sure that they were on there well and I did Mod Podge over the top of the label. I didn't go over the edges very much because again I don't want it to go on the box but I did uh, just go over the top of the label a little bit so that it would be nice and sealed because this is printed just on printer paper. So I didn't want it to get wet or something and get smudged. So the Mod Podge will seal that in. But look how cute that looks. I think it looks so adorable. And then I'll do this one here. I did the same thing, just added the Mod Podge to the back of the label and then added that to my box. I was at a charity shop recently and found these two table placemats and they look like handkerchiefs and it's really nice quality. They're kind of thick, they're double-sided and I thought they would make great pillows because they were double-sided. I could peel the inside apart and feel that there was space in there. So I purchased them for, I think it was a dollar. It might've been $2, but either way, it was a really good deal and I thought they would make great pillows. Uh, and I have plenty of this polyfill stuffing. So I just made a little bit of a rip down in the edge with um, my seam ripper and just, just got that thread out of there. And I just started stuffing and stuffed until I was happy with how full they were. This is such a quick, easy uh, flip to do and just a way to repurpose placemats I think I mean if they if you can get them double-sided or buy two and make them double-sided that's always really handy 
So I just took some hot glue because these are just going to uh, be sitting around. So they're not going to get much use. I don't believe that the glue is going to hurt too much. So I glued it closed with my hot glue and then sealed up a couple of spots where there were holes from the thread that had ripped, I guess, and just sealed that up nice. What a great pop of color for someone's covered porch on their outdoor furniture or even in your home just for a pop of color and not just for the holiday, the 4th of July holiday, but for all summer. Red is a great color. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. Don't forget to like and share and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Make sure you check out this next video. I know you're going to love it. And have a great day.